Thank you very much. Now call on Stuart Stevenson to be followed by Liam MacArthur. Six minutes, please. Uh, thank you very much uh, indeed, uh, Presiding Officer, and it is a great uh, privilege to be speaking in this debate. Um, when I demitted office as a minister in September this year, and uh, whom Zer Yousaf was uh, appointed, it was a bit of a wake-up call to discover he was 40 years younger than me. Um, it is uh, a good opportunity to uh, look at the achievements of uh, previous members of this Parliament and Lord McConnell, or Jack McConnell as we knew him when he was here, uh, has two major achievements. Uh, that is developing to the form that it now has the relationship that we have with Malawi and anti-smoking legislation. It is somewhat ironic, of course, uh, that one of Malawi's largest exports is tobacco. The value of that is falling. The proportion of its exports that are constituted uh, by tobacco uh, is rising. So, if nothing else, we owe a debt to Malawi because we are trying to eliminate a market for one of their biggest exports. Um, and, and I hope that we succeed in, in doing that at uh, some time in the future. It was my very great privilege and pleasure to chair uh, the, the meeting where uh, the First Minister Mary Robinson announced uh, the Climate Justice Fund in May uh, this year. Um, and Mary Robinson is someone who has uh, a relationship uh, with Malawi and with uh, the President of Malawi, Joyce Banda. Uh, Joyce Banda joined the Global Leaders Council for Reproductive Health in 2010. Uh, it's chaired uh, by Mary Robinson. So many of the connections uh, that matter to us and matter to uh, Malawi are connections that we are familiar with, the multi-stranded, and it is our job to support and sustain as many of these uh, as is possible. Again, uh, when I was in Rio for the Rio Plus 20 conference, uh, one of the things that I was able to do there was to meet with people with Malawi to talk about the support that we were giving with them. And just to show the interest that exists in our young people in Scotland, uh, I also did uh, a teleconference uh, over the GLOW network into Scotland schools, and one of the topics that came up was Malawi. So I was sitting in South America talking about uh, Malawi in Africa to school children in Scotland. And doesn't that illustrate how interdependent and small uh, the world is in the modern world? And like others, uh, I would wish to commend the work of uh, Martha Payne, who, who has just fabulously, fabulously illustrated the potential of those uh, so young. That, of course, includes the minister who's 40 years uh, younger uh, than I am. We've heard uh, only 40. Uh, sometimes for me it feels much more. Um, it, it is worth uh, saying that uh, women and the issue of women in Malawi uh, has run as a strand through much of this debate. Uh, Forbes magazine has a list of the 100 women who run the world. And uh, Joyce Banda is number 71, the president of Malawi. Now, fine. But how many people from the British Isles are on that list? And the answer is only two, one of whom is the Queen at number 26, and the other of whom is J.K. Rowling at number 76. So I think there's something quite significant in that international recognition uh, of the position uh, of Joyce uh, Banda. Uh, she, of course, is no relation uh, to Hastings Banda, who was the very first uh, president of Malawi, who of course uh, got his second medical degree here in 1941 at the University of Edinburgh. And so as not to disappoint my fans, um, my father uh, was at university with Hastings Banda uh, <laughs> doing his medical degree, uh, and uh, he was president of the union at that time. Further connections, because you want more. Um, a, David Livingston's grandson was a gentleman called Dr. Wilson who lived in St. Philans, and he came and did my father's locum so that we could go on holiday each year. And actually, as a youngster, therefore, we talked about not Malawi, but Nyasaland uh, and its, its predecessors. But let's return to the subject of women. The whole issue of climate change, which incidentally Donald Trump says has been invented by the Chinese, but then that merely proves we should believe in it utterly sincerely if that's what he says. Um, the whole issue of climate change is one that differentially affects women. 
uh, particularly in countries like Malawi, women are the water gatherers. They have to go further for water because aridity is a greater problem. They have to go further for firewood. There is less of it. It's being burnt. The output of agricultural industries in Malawi and much of sub-Saharan Africa is greatly reduced as the climate changes. And that differentially affects women in particular. So I think it is right in our climate change uh, uh, work and in our support for Malawi that we have a whole series of uh, projects that are involved uh, with supporting women. We're empowering women as local leaders. We're supporting a midwifery model. Mary's Meals we've talked about, and we're supporting a maternal health uh, project. I think all of that is absolutely excellent. It uh, is part of our moral duty to support people who've been affected by what we've benefited from on, on climate change. Malawi is our current focus. We can do much more in the future. I hope that we do so. But ultimately, the future belongs to the young, but the young of Malawi in particular. Let's make it the young of Malawi who benefit from much of what we do. Thank you, Presiding Officer.